All right, all right. How's everybody doing? We can start rolling because we have a jam-packed agenda and it's 11 on the dot. So let's start out with our usual. Who's got something good to share? Oh, this is, let me know when we're good. There we go. Who's got something good? Hello, I do. All right. I have my first listing under contract. Awesome, congratulations. Thank you. Price point? Um, it was listed at 295, uh, 13 acres of land, and we ended up going under contract for 285. Awesome, well, it's fitting the theme, right? Buy dirt, good job. Awesome, or sell it in this case. Anybody else? All right, Dave Rosenthal. Just closed on a house about 20 minutes ago. Celebrate, Dave. I can't Yeah, you're ramping up the real estate now that you uh that you're so low roll, right? Huh? Awesome. Anybody else? Who else got something good to share? Anybody online? Going once, going twice. I wasn't talking to you. Okay. Good deal. All right, let's keep rolling. All right, let's get into a couple of announcements. First and foremost, a reminder that we do observe the Juneteenth holiday. Uh, so we will have uh, the, the regular leadership staff will not be here, um, but the office I believe will be open with weekend staff. Correct, Kristen? Yep, right, weekend staff on Monday. Yes, that's correct. Awesome, all right, that is this Monday, this coming Monday, June 18th, okay? Awesome. And another reminder, next week's team meeting, we are having our summer offsite meetings. Uh, and so next, next Wednesday's meeting is at Harvest Green. All right. Same time. Um, uh, the location is not here, which model home it is, but we will blast that in our team meeting reminders. Okay. But it is going to be at a model home in Harvest Green. All right. So reminder, meet there tomorrow at 11. Yes, sir. All right, so where's Harvest Green? So Harvest Green is a Johnson development in Richmond, right? Right off of Grand Parkway, um, Grand Parkway and? Near the prison, as Pam would put it. All right, as uh, <laughs> Yes, that is not exactly how we should put it. Yeah, yeah. all right, and, uh, and what? Somebody just, Harlem West Airport. Okay, off of Grand Parkway. A lot of growth there. All right, let's go, Greg. Yeah. I'll be just real quick. How's everyone doing? Very, very awesome. My name is Greg. I handle the marketing for the office. Just a quick thing. So we have a couple of new templates for you guys because you know Sunday is a couple holidays. So you have Father's Day and you have Juneteenth. So I have two social media posts you can grab on Agent Marketing Desk. I'll probably also post it on the Facebook closed group so you guys can grab it. You can download it and use it as is. Or if you want to customize it, you can do that as well. So I want to make sure you guys have that option for you. Remember, that's on Friday. Why you want to do that? Because if for those who do utilize social media or for those who want to send out an email campaign, sending to their or their database saying Happy Father's Day, these are things that you can do to nurture your database. Holidays is one of the easiest opportunities to nurture your database. It's not as salesy. It's something that you could just say, say and let people remind people about these important days to you. So um, you can find it on agentmarketingdesk.com, but I'll, I'll actually post it on a closed Facebook group as well. So that's all. Yep, you're welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Greg. All righty. And who's up next? Oh, chat, anything to add? Okay, awesome. Oh, my turn. All right. All right, so let's get the ball rolling. So I guess most of y'all didn't get the unannounced uh, uniform requirement, right? Except for Pam. So thank you, Pam, for participating, right? We finally get to have the buy. Yes, right? That's awesome. How, how, how many years you've been in the business? So I guess that that's where it comes from, my experience. Yeah. All right. So where did this whole buy dirt come from, right? So Gary announced it during team meeting that, hey, this is something we should focus on. Low inventory. Well, how do we make inventory, right? If for growth, land, you know, find land, find developers. That's how we can maybe add inventory yet. And then the biggest, of course, piece of advice is, right? There's no more of it. You can't make any more. So land will always be valuable. So to stay into that theme, our guest today that I wanted to bring in to kind of talk about how you get into that 
was our one and only Robbie Yansky. He's officially our KW land uh, member in this office. And, uh, you know, I lovingly, uh, I've had a relationship with Robbie for a while and I lovingly love to call him King of Podunk. And he used to always laugh at it because uh, he always has the most uh, interesting locations for his listings and land. So, uh, but come on up Robbie. So we can, you know, enough of me, more, more, more about you and uh, so, enlighten so everybody. So to put that in context, you might have a few ESLs here. English second language. What, what does podunk mean? You really gonna put me on? The yeah. <laughs> podunk pretty much refers to middle of nowhere. Um, you know, people can probably take it a little negatively, but it means uh, middle of nowhere rural areas essentially. Redneck right? rural areas. Yeah. Come on up. Come on up. Okay. Come on up. This is like, all right. So again, as I mentioned, um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Robbie. You know. Well, I've been with KW nearly ten years, my entire career. Yeah, I started my business here and I kept it here for the simple reason that it brings me more, more business and I get opportunities like this to connect with a lot of like-minded people that are able to, we're able to grow our businesses together. And so I started, like I said, here at KW and I've been here at KW for almost an entire 10 years and growing along the way. KW has been a big part of making that happen. Awesome. All right. So tell me a little bit about like just Robbie Yansky's business, like stats a little bit, like the, I can... That's about my business. So I sell on average anywhere between 500 and 1,000 acres a year. Uh, and that's probably 20 to 30 transactions. Half of my business is in the city and half of it's out of the city. Because obviously when you buy land, there's more of it to buy and sell outside of the city than it is inside the city. And so um, that's just some, some quick, easy stats about me. That's about how much I sell. I work with mainly people that are listing anywhere from five to... 166 acres was my largest listing so far. I've got an appointment for a 600 acre listing coming up. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And you still do double in residential. I right? do about 50, yeah. 50. Um, so 50, 50 house and 50, 50 land. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. And because so, I live here. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about KW land. Now I know you, you know, just started dabbling in that a little bit, but some of the benefits of that and, and, and what that entails. Sure. So KW land allows you access to a lot of different tools and resources. If you're looking to help clients buy and sell land, being a part of KW land allows you the tools and resources that you need to be able to get your business up and running off the ground and growing and present yourself as someone that's knowledgeable and an expert in that area. You know, a simple example is a map called MapRite tool where you can pull up a map and it has a lot of different features than just a Google map because it's land specific. You can measure the perimeters, measure the areas. You can see the different layers of what types of soils are there. If there's any easements that run across the land itself, um, flood zones, stuff like that. So MapRite's a simple example of a tool that KW Land brings to you to be able to grow your business in that segment or that sector land, which is what I work mm -hmm. in. And there's a, but there's a requirement, right? To be a member of KW yeah, land. There's a requirement. You've got to sell so much acreage per year. They just want to make sure you're knowledgeable in the transactions and you're helping you're you're a good fiduciary to your clients. Cool. All right. So let's get into the nitty gritty of your business. Okay. Sure. So how did you end up farming or getting business in, I guess I should preface that by, as I've noticed your business grow, you have a lot of listings, whether it's residential or land listings that are way in the outskirts of Houston or even just outside of the Houston area, you know? And so tell me a little bit about how that came about. Like, how did you basically farm, for lack of better terms, rural areas? Well, <clears throat> a large part of the rural, rural area that I quote unquote farm uh, and market my business in is partly because I'm from that area. I grew up about two hours west of here. And so I know the area very well. And I've got a lot of friends, family, and clientele that are still here. So that makes it a little bit easier for me to continue to grow my business and expand it out into that area rather than just in the city that I'm currently living. So to tie into that, oftentimes I got to drive you know, two hours, one way just to go either show a, uh, show a listing or for a, a listing presentation to meet clients. But that's the market area that I chose to work in. And, and to go back to your original question, where I got started in that is a, uh, who's now client of mine, had a $10,000 10, lot that she needed to sell in Fresno. And I listed it and, and sold it for her. And then um, other sellers and other 
people that had property around there that they wanted to sell saw that listing and were impressed with the amount of detail I put into and effort I put into marketing and selling that listing. And they sent me business and it just snowballed from there into more and more land. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So what are some of the different ways that you can buy or sell land for people that are like really starting to, you know, maybe, you know, deciding whether this is something they want to pursue. Right. And we have a little, um, I know you have a little visual for it. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, cause you mentioned to me yesterday that, Hey, it's not just land. There's so many different aspects to it. So go into that a little bit. There's so many different avenues that a purchaser or a, pro or a property owner can use the land for to make money off of. And this is just kind of a simple short list that I put together, but they all have to do with bringing in income in some way, form or fashion. And even there's one thing on the list that <clears throat> I was recently reminded of one of my clients that I have a listing with actually gets paid by a government uh, grant and the government pays them not to grow rice on the property. Simple as that, because it was an old rice farm and the government doesn't want it. They don't want any more rice production in the area. So they actually pay the landowners uh, in grant form every year to not grow any rice on it. They just cut them a check. So there's, there's so many different ways you can make money with land and with property ownership. Uh, I've got at least five, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, currently I'm using at least five of these, these different ones on, on my own personal properties okay. to produce income. A couple of highlights, a couple, couple of highlights off the list. A couple of highlights? Yeah. Uh, billboard sign. <clears throat> That's a cool one that a lot of people don't think about. When you, when you have a client looking for land, if they're, if they happen to, to be looking at purchasing property along a major highway, you can contact all the billboard companies around JGI, Clear Channel you name them and say, Hey guys, what are your rates for this area? And do you have an interest in signing a lease? They may sign a 40 year lease with you for that property owner. Uh, another one, storage facility is big. Obviously everybody's looking for storage these days. You can pick up a piece of dirt and make a ton of money off of storage and warehouse facilities and things like that. Um, hangar space for aircraft. A lot of people may not know, but I'm, I've been trained to get my pilot's license and <clears throat> in that niche, there's at least a 30 to a 50 person waiting list for one of the it's about 25 different general aviation airports around Houston for small aircraft, private aircraft. There's a 30 to 50 person waiting list at almost each of those airports for people to park and store their personal aircraft. So there's a shortage of hangar space. Most people won't, wouldn't realize that, wouldn't even think about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. What else? The most obvious one, <clears throat> single family home rental. Everybody's doing those these days, but that's the simplest and easiest thing with what you can do with dirt. Yeah, that's pretty comprehensive. And, you know, you kind of don't get an idea. You just think, oh, land and it's, you know, single form or fashion. <clears throat> and yet, you know, there's different avenues and that's, you know, that's sure. pretty awesome. All right. So you talked about how you got started and what was your entry into land, right? But how did you grow your business? Okay. So first, how did you grow your business to where it is today? And what were some of the resources that helped you do that? So how did I grow my business from where it was to what it is today? Yeah. Honestly, it's just paying attention to the details. It's taking great care of your clients and net work equals net worth. I told you the story about the $10,000 listing that's brought me a, a ton of more land listings since then. How did I grow my business? Well, it's just, it's paying attention to the details and it's understanding what sellers and buyers and clients are looking for in these markets and finding a way to provide that to them in terms of level of service and excuse me, in terms of better photography or better, better videos for your listings. It's going above and beyond every chance you get because that $10,000 listing brought me another minimum $5 million worth of listings just because I paid attention to a couple of details on that tiny listing at that time. And so that's how I honestly grew my business is by the bootstraps, just plugging in and putting all of your effort and your intensity into what you're doing. Another a uh, million dollar listing, 100 acres, Shiner, Texas, if anybody knows where Lavaca County is. That listing came from another listing that this executor of, uh, of the estate saw. He loved the way I wrote my description, beautiful Texas countryside, stuff like that. So he just called me up one day and said, hey, I'm in Virginia, but I got 100 acres. I need to list over there in rural Texas. I uh, saw your listing. 
for 36 acres or three hundred thousand dollars uh and i love the way you wrote that thing up so we'd like to interview you for the position well they interviewed me i was the only agent that they even considered but you know i said, just pay attention to the small details and put some extra effort in whereas other people won't take the time to do that and that's honestly how i grew my business so, so segue from second. that no it's so good resources but hang on you, you brought up an interesting point you said you were the only one that interviewed for that <clears throat> for that piece of land so do you think that it's pretty similar to what it, the statistics are in residential where the higher percentage of the first person interviewed is typically the one that's gets the deal depends on how good your marketing is and what they like and what they're seeing about you uh, you don't necessarily need to be in the first position but you better know what you're talking about when you get in front of them okay and they better establish you in their mind as the expert i was just at a listing appointment this last weekend where i was up against three other agents this is again rural this is two hours away from here in the small town i'm from granted i have a personal connection with one of the five sellers but i was up against four other agents that are local live in that town all day long i took that listing because i spent just by an estimate i probably spent 30 minutes to an hour more than any of those other local agents would have spent with those sellers explaining things down to the minute detail about how the process of the transaction is going to go, what they can expect from me, what they can expect in terms of sales price, and just knowing your stuff. So That's awesome. you don't have to be first position, but you've got to know your stuff. And, yep. he, and, and like the example of the guy I gave where I was the only interviewee, it's because he looked at that listing. He saw that listing description that I put so much effort into being uh, descriptive and unique with my words. And he said, Man, this guy knows what he's doing. He looked at the photography. He looked at the whole listing as a package. And he said, this guy knows what he's doing. I can't really go wrong with him. I don't need anybody else. And after he spoke with me and that was solidified in his mind, it was done. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and we're going to, I'm going to get into that where how, how somebody that's getting into that, what it takes in just a second. But before that, um, I'd like to share, I'd like for you to share some stats um, or, you know, just some information that you've put together okay. um, for, you know, basically the state of Texas, which obviously we focus on. Yeah. Right. So let's stay wanna... on this one for a second, guys. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't have all these stats memorized because there's a ton of them and Texas is huge. But I'll go over what I do know on the slides. And I shared this with the mayor so that we could put it up in front of you because visuals always help, right? So Region 5. Um, if I tell a client, okay, I only operate or most of my business is in Region 5, they don't have a clue where that's at. So I don't, I basically tell them I do an arc from Houston, north across the San Antonio, but this is region five. This is mainly where I operate. Houston is what, right about, right around here? Mm -hmm. And here, yeah, that's here's, right there. Yeah. here's the county where I'm from. It's almost a two hour difference. So to segue just a tiny bit into what it takes to be a land agent, what it takes is being willing to drive this entire area here over the span of a day or a day and a half, if you have to you line up your business as such where your appointments are here and here and here and your home base is here it's a lot of driving it's a lot of time on the road okay so that's that one <clears throat> same business so yeah it's broken down yep. all right texas top commodities one of the reasons why land is so big in texas is because you'll notice all of these different commodities have to do with owning property where they can be produced cattle hay milk cotton animals Broilers or chickens, in case you didn't know. You know, everybody likes Chick Fil A, right? Yeah. You got to raise them somewhere. <laughs> okay. There it is. Changing Texas. Okay. Population: twenty-six million, one hundred seventy-one million acres. One hundred seventy-one million acres in total in Texas. 142 of those million acres are private working lands, ranches, farms. So that's another reason why land sales are so big in Texas is because we have so much of it to sell. And it's relatively cheap compared to other places you might think of, New York, Florida, uh, California, things like that. We're so big that you have a lot of private land. And this, this stat right here blows a lot of people's a lot of inter international people's mind because it's uh, more privately and governmentally owned lands overseas. And like, for example, my wife is international as well. So it blew her mind that private people can own so much land in a place. 
because 90 to 95 percent of land is owned by the government in some places well, that's pretty interesting stuff well this was interesting right here right go for it yeah so <clears throat> so one person equals 250,000 people the amount of people that live in a rural quote-unquote rural set setting not a metropolitan setting is 10 percent or less in texas and even though texas is this big with this many acres only 10 percent of people live in the rural acreages where there's not a big population see most of texas in population is right here on this side in the in the dallas austin san antonio and houston markets in that quote unquote goal and triangle yeah. so these are relatively uninhabited parts of texas as some of you probably already know but, but we always talk about this from the other end, right? Where we talk about growth and people moving to Texas and not enough inventory. And this kind of shows it from the other end that, it does. that the, you know, the rural areas of Texas are really shrinking. Yes, they are. Kind of crazy. But then this is interesting too. Less than 1% of Texas's population are quote unquote landowners. And when you say land, generally you think five acres or more. So less than 1% of Texas's 26 million people own five acres or more of land. And that's a shame. I think we all own, all own a bunch of Texas land myself. King of Podunk again. There you go. Absolutely. Sounds good. All right. All right. Here you can see since 1971, land prices, you know, they weren't at zero, but they were pretty close. They were in the hundreds of dollars per acre. And today they're in the closer to, on average, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 per acre. Obviously, that's not around Houston, Fort Bend counties. Houston, <laughs> Fort Bend <laughs> counties, you're going to be, you're, you can find stuff for 30,000 an acre uh 40 000, 50 000 an acre larger land parcels obviously but this is this is this is average across rural texas eight thousand acres from from 100 100 to 200 an acre to eight thousand an acre over the course of about 50 years yeah and it's skyrocketed in the last that's exactly what i was saying. seven yeah or even here from 2003 it's pretty solid yeah yeah yep and it's not really coming back down. You're not going to see a crash in those land prices because we have so many investors coming in and, and so little land. All right. All right. So those were the slides. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, knowing all of that, all right, let's focus on agents looking to capitalize on this, right? So if one wants to focus on land, what would it take? What would it take? Uh, we showed you guys the map of the area that I drive. You might spend... If you're me, you might spend uh, two to two and a half days of your week, full days on the road, driving those areas, going to listing appointments, looking at land, looking at properties, showing properties. Because if you advertise yourself as a land expert, you'll have buyers come to you saying, we want to buy land, we want to invest, but we don't know where to invest in. Uh, it's kind of like showing clients houses sometimes they need to drive the different neighborhoods around here to understand what those neighborhoods look like and how they feel you've got to drive lands to understand what's out there and how that looks and feels you're driving a whole bunch so what it takes to do this a willingness to drive a whole bunch spend a bunch of time on the road and for me for my business uh the tools resources dues associations that i'm all a part of it takes about $7,000 a month just in expenses for those resources to be able to sell land. Okay. Let's say willing to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. How do you lead generate for land? How do you lead generate for land? So establish yourself as quickly as possible as the land expert or as the land resource. If you haven't done a bunch of land transactions, be the land resource for information. People are always interested in learning more about land ownership or the benefits of land ownership, what they can do with land, things like that. So establish yourself as the resource. And there is a ton of information, data, stats, resources out there, put out there by Texas A&M University, put out there by all the different asso Texas Association of Realtors, where we got a bunch of this, the slides and the stats from because Texas is, it has so much land, we have all those stats in that association as well. So establish yourself as one of those two on Facebook, on Instagram, just start wherever you can with whatever you're doing and let all of your current clients know. For example, I had a closing, oh, it's been maybe two years now. And I asked my clients at closing, I said, guys, uh, what you gonna do with all this equity you got in your house? Well, we've been thinking about my land. I said, great, I love land, let me show you some land. They said, okay, where should we be looking at? I said, well, 
you should be looking here because of this. If you want to do this, you need to look over here. If you like fishing, you want to, you need to look over here. If you like hunting, you need to be over here. We like hunting. We want some hunting land. So, okay, great. Here's why you need, why you need to look in this area for hunting. And this is your per average per acre prices. So we went and started looking at land of that particular client there. Oh man, uh, we looked at land all over and I spent at least four or five, maybe six of my entire weekend, Saturday and Sunday, because it was such a far drive between here and Dallas, looking at land in those areas. I spent at least five or six of my entire weekends finding a place for them, showing them different properties around. That's what, five times two days? That's 10 days worth of my full work on weekends away from my family to be able to sell them a parcel of land. Now that parcel of land went from, we got it for 2,000 an acre a couple of years ago. It's worth about 7,000 an acre now. So their equity has been doing very well. So have conversations with your clients to answer the question. Hey, what do y'all want to do with your equity? You know, would you, have you ever thought about owning land? Do you know what you can do with land? Well, land is not getting any cheap, you know? Yeah, so let's take that a bit further, right? That's something we were talking about yesterday. What kind of questions would you need to know how to answer? Like you talked okay. about knowing the craft, right? No, being knowledgeable. <clears throat> what are some of the kind of questions that you would need to know how to answer? And to brush up on that, what are some of the resources to find these answers? Right. So expect the kind of questions from your buyers, like what do we need to know about land ownership? What kind of... Um, what kind of things can we take advantage of for tax benefits and property write-offs and things like that? And the flip side of that is um, make sure that you have all those resources in place. If you, if you don't know the answers to those questions, make sure you know the resources to go and find those answers. And there's so many of them online, starting with uh, Texas Association of Realtors and then going to the various counties that they may be looking in brush up on brush up on the re the market regions of texas and what is important for each region and why a buyer would want to purchase in certain areas um i kind of lost my train of thought you got to go back to that question no that's okay some resources to help you find those answers or know like brush up on knowledge on it okay so you were naming a few yesterday when we were just preparing there's so many there's so many off the top of my head uh each individual county has different regulations rules and requirements for for building codes for improvements and stuff like that and so around here one of the big things is um is my property in a floodplain what's the elevation of the property will the county require me to build up so high before i can start improving and put a storage building or a warehouse on it so the resources for getting answers to those questions are straight from the source, the county itself. Hey, I got a buyer looking at a property over here in, for example, Wharton, Texas. Uh, and it is at elevation 90 feet, for example. What do they need to know about uh, making improvements like adding a warehouse onto there or some storage facilities? How high up are they gonna have to build it? What else do they need to know? Where are your county rules and regulations on, posted online? Where can I find those and pass those along to him? Just, just one simple example, but there's so many different resources you can go to, but, but as close to the actual source as possible, like the county, to answer questions like that are really where you need to go. Um, same thing for wildlife or agriculture exemptions on property. You got to go to the county, to the source, because they're the ones that have those regulations put into place to be able to answer those questions for your clients about how they can save money on property taxes using any of the various ways to do that. Cool. All right. So to kind of wrap this up, right, before I close it out with letting people have some additional information, what are some final thoughts and advice to take advantage of or get into different various forms of land transactions? The answer is right here. It is literally right there. If you had, if you, if you look at where the chart was before, if you had bought dirt two, three, five, ten years ago, look where, you, where that equity would be today. And the kind of money you could have made off it since then with all those different ways to capitalize on it. But if you're, uh, honestly, if you're looking to help clients buy land, buy dirt, look at different land option properties for purchase, 
there's so many different facets of the business and, and information that you kind of need to know. It's best to put together a, a simple questionnaire for your clients. What are you looking to use the land for? How long are you going to hold the land? Um, how would you like to access it? Do you need, do you have to have paved road frontage because you don't want to get your vehicle dirty when you go out there? Or is a county road that's going to get dusty okay? You know, it's a, it's a million different questions you could ask them, but, but a simple questionnaire to kind of just similar to if you're asking a regular buyer, what kind of house do you want to buy? You know, you've got to have all those, all that stuff lined up. Awesome. Appreciate you. And, man. Yeah, absolutely. And on the, on this, on the listing side, when you've got a, a client, a seller client, you, you're also going to have a, a list of questions from them because on the farm and ranch contracts, which are quite a bit different than one to four residentials, there's a lot more sections in there pertaining to parts of the land that you need to be aware of. The seller needs to be able to answer those questions in the listing agreements and the quest and your questionnaire so that you can properly convey that information to prospective buyers when they ask a bunch of those questions. And when those buyers call up, you're going to know how sophisticated those buyers are and how much they know about land by the questions they're asking. That's what they're looking for. Yeah. I just thought of something because you, you just said that, mm -hmm. um, that is kind of out of order now, but yet I still think it's equally important. How long does it typically take to close a land deal and what kind of, um, like, because there's no inspection technically, but what kind of assessments sometimes could there be and how long do those take essentially? How long could a process of closing a land deal take? Great question, great question. So um, in this market, land has been closing almost as fast as houses when it's priced competitively because we got a ton of land investors and buyers looking from all over. You've seen the What stats, do you mean by all over? All over, you've seen the stats of people moving from uh, other parts of the nation to Texas and other countries in the world to Texas. So a typical transaction for land when it's listed competitive, anywhere from 30 to 90 days, close. Now in a typical normal market, it could be three to six months because land has traditionally historically sold a little bit slower than houses. And another point about that is, is land sales, land prices, land appreciation typically lags the housing market. Right now, we're starting to see a stabilization and a correction of the housing market ever so slightly. We're not seeing that land just yet. We're not going to see that in land for another several months. It lags behind housing. Traditionally, historically, it has. I don't have the explanation or the answer for why that is, but I'm sure it's there. Yeah. Um, there was another part to your question. What was it? Um, just the testings and something. You know, there's no ah, inspections, but there's like, no well, inspections. Yeah, but but um, environmental, what are called environmental phase checks, are what a lot of people do for land to make sure there's no old storage tanks, fuel tanks, gas stations underneath the land, stuff like that, wetlands. Um, you'll want to do your due diligence at the county to make sure that it's currently under agriculture exemption so that you can take advantage of those reduced property taxes and continue that agriculture exemption. There's a little bit of due diligence involved, but it's not like getting your plumbing tested. Okay. So that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you, man. You're such a wealth of knowledge and uh, thank you for sharing this. And what I wanted to add to this was the point that I really wanted to do this for was it's not so it's not a it's not so black and white when it comes to land as Robbie clearly just demonstrated and there's a lot involved. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, Robbie is KW Land now, official member of KW Land um, in our office. And what he's agreed to do graciously is to to teach land classes. Okay, throughout the year. All right. So this was kind of like the tip of the iceberg. There's so much detail that he can go into. And there's so many resources he has. So if you're interested, be on the lookout for that. Okay, because he will be providing these. Okay, so appreciate you totally for all of that. Okay. Appreciate uh, it was an uh, absolute pleasure yeah, having you. Absolutely. Guys, I, I'm, I'm happy to be a resource for you. If you have any questions, most of the questions that I get, honestly, are, do you have any land lenders? for my clients that are looking to buy land, stuff like that. So I have all of those people uh, for, for the different phase inspections. I have all of those people for the different surveyors that are doing the various counties because, uh, for example, ProServe doesn't want to travel all the way down to Waller County to do a survey for us at all, all the time, you know? So the different so surveyors, I've either. got all those resources, guys. Just reach out to me and shame on me for not having a slide up here that has my contact info for you, but you can find me. I'm pretty easy. I'm around. <laughs> and of course, I'm sure you'll pay a referral to somebody you want to take care sure of. Sure, I will. 
Sure, we'll do it all day long. I'm, I'm doing it all the time. Anybody that you don't want to, yeah. I mean, if you're not ready yet to get into land or you feel like you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do them a great fiduciary just yet and you want to tag right. along, figure it out, watch, see how it works, refer them out to me. I'm happy to, happy to help as well. Partner up. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Again, okay. he's awesome. And cool. you guys give him a hand. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And remember, okay, we have a question. All right. Here, Robbie, come back up here. We can take maybe one. How often are you seeing mineral rights transfer or are there any mineral rights to transfer these days? Mineral, so she's asking about mineral rights. How often am I seeing mineral rights being transferred to purchasers in a transaction? It's, it's the wild, wild west. I was shocked just recently on a transaction where a client of mine admitted to me that she was willing to convey all of her minerals with a property and um so it all depends on the seller situation traditionally historically most people have figured out that game and they're not willing to convey them almost at any price um and so my advice to uh, to a client would be hey, it depends on your personal situation whether you want that money now or you want to hold out for possibly more money later from the oil and gas companies we'll see what happens but you know, 99% of the time, it's nearly impossible to negotiate minerals for a buyer in a transaction. The sellers typically retain them. Great. She's got to follow. She's got to follow. Great up, question. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. So what you're saying is what, I, or what I'm understanding you say is if someone's conveying mineral rights, the property is worth a lot more then yes, if there are no mineral rights or if there are already oil and gas leases on the property. Definitely. So a recent transaction I had, uh, that same hundred acres in Shiner had nine producing wells next door where they were pulled into. And these property owners on that hundred acres were receiving royalty checks of $10,000 a month. Those mineral rights were sold on a mineral brokerage exchange similar to our real estate MLS for a little over half a million dollars. Somebody was, so somebody was paying about a 20% ROI is what they were banking on. So they sold for half a million dollars they were producing by dirt all day long. Yeah. So that was a very, very rare exception and rare case that a seller was willing to let go of those minerals because it was in an estate and they all wanted to just kind of disperse, take their portions and go live their lives. Um, but in rural areas, and it's very hard to quantify this data because it just doesn't happen all that often that minerals get sold. You can bank on anywhere from $1,000 an acre extra up and over market value of just the uh, surface rights, $1,000 acre for minerals, unproducing, up to 5,000 or more per acre currently producing. There's a wide range. So you got 100 acres, that's 500 grand extra if it's currently producing or in production. Just for the prospect of production, it's a possibility of an extra $1,000 an acre. Somebody may come in and lease it up and start producing. Great questions, thank you. Yes. Hi, Robbie, I just had a question. My question is related to that. Uh, I guess it was one of the first slides about how you can use it. Yes. I know one of the things said RV park, but I was informed by one real estate agent that you can do like a land BNB, just like Airbnb. Is there such a thing for land where you can do like a land BNB? And can you explain that? Sure. I know a little bit about it. Just from what I've seen, they call it glamping. So it's a VRBO for just land. You come out there and you build your campfire, you set your tent up. They maybe, they maybe they have some nice mature trees. They have a nice riverfront, waterfront, lakefront setting. Chad knows a little bit about that stuff. Uh, so it's, it's a land lease, if you will. And it's, you know, we, what, a week long lease similar to a VRBO? Yeah, that's out there too. I mean, there's a million different ways you can make money with land. It really is. My, just as a side note, my family for the last 40 years has operated um, rock, dirt, sand, soil mining gravel pits and quarries kind of aggregate sounds business. exciting yeah <laughs> rocks so it ties directly into land right so so we've operated the sand and gravel trucking company business for the last 40 years it's, it's in my blood it's in my family third generation so 
That's another big way to make money off of land because when you mine the gravel for a road, for example, you need to build a road on your land. We were paying landowners 50 cents a cubic yard. This is a cubic yard, close to a cubic yard. 50 cents a cubic yard and selling it for 30 bucks a cubic yard. Now there's transportation costs, obviously, and diesel costs and stuff like that, but just another way you can make money with land. Sell the dirt, buy it and sell it. Sure. Awesome. Appreciate you, man. You bet. Thank you. I mean, hey, I could go on and on and on, but so I'm going to Yeah, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> he can talk all day, by the way. He's kind of like me. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, let's. Uh, today is also awards day. So the one and only. Okay, round of applause. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, very nice. I know. Well, now we get to applaud for all of our award winners because they did the actual hard work, right? All right. So jumping into our May awards, we like recognizing our listing unit individual earners first. And in first place, our very own Robbie Yansky. What do you know? That's right. With four listed units in the month of May, followed by Lyle Mugi with three. Congratulations, Robbie. And then uh, for our top teams, the Flores team with five listed units, followed by the Kimber V team with four. Congratulations. And then moving on into our groups, we had the BNP team leading the way with nine units, followed by the Audrey O'Neill team with seven, and the Kathy Stubbs team with three. Congratulations. And we are seeing, as a side note, some additional listings coming on the market for our office. And so Chad was talking in our ALC meeting yesterday about he is predicting we're going to see some more listings coming on the market. So go take your unfair share of those listings. Uh, celebrating our top listing volume earners, Sarah Hanif in first place with over 2 million in listed volume, followed by Susan Garzinski with 1.2 million, Amanda Lee and Murtis Turter tied with 950,000, Robbie Yansky at 915, and Lyle with 834. Congratulations. <laughs> And our top teams, we got the Flores team with 1.6 million listed volume, the Kimber V team with 1.3, Pam Shockey team with over a million, and the Borrow Buy Sell team. This is Neil and Simron Patel. They're a newer team. Congratulations. And the Bush Watterson team, top listing teams. All right, our groups, we have the BNP team leading the way with 5.3 million in listed volume. The Audra O'Neill team in second place with 4.7 million. The Kathy Stubbs team with one and a half. The SIA group with 1.2, followed by the Mona Knows Homes team. Congratulations. In our top closed units for individuals, we have Sahar Khatib with eight closed units in the month of May. Justin Duffield and uh, Sapna Patel and Sharon uh, Parker tied with six closed units in the month of May. Congratulations. <laughs> Followed by Chris Lisak, Emily Shepard, Jose Montiel, and Robbie Yansky, all tied with four closed units. Woo -hoo! <laughs> Gotta fit a bunch of people on the slide, right? All right, then we got our top teams. We got the Ambassador Real Estate Group, which is Serena Chu with five units, tied with the Kimber V team and the Yaw Real Estate team, that's Yuman and Azam. The, all with five closed units in the month of May. Then the Butch Watterson team with four, followed by the DS team with three. Congratulations, teams. All right, and then we got our top groups, the BMP team with, drum roll, 20 closed units in the month of May. Woo! It takes a lot of work and a lot of coordination, so great job to the BMP team. Followed by the SIA group with 12, the investor group with 10, Audra O'Neill team with nine, and the Kathy Stubbs team with six. Congratulations. And then our individual adjusted closed volume, meaning that it's based on a 3% commission. Sahar Khatib with over four and a half million adjusted closed volume, followed by Sapna Patel with 4.2 million, Justin Duffield with just under 2 million, Sharon Parker with 1.8 million, and Chris Lisak with 1.4. Congratulations. And our top teams, adjusted closed volume, Butch Watterson in first place with just under one and a half million. Kimber V team with 1.4, the Pam Shockey team with just over a million, followed by the home coach group, which is CW Ross and the Urban team. Congratulations. 
And then our top teams, when you're closing units, the volume's gonna follow. 5.2 million adjusted closed volume for the BMP team, followed by the Audra O'Neill team with just under 5 million. The investor group with 3 million, the Kathy Stubbs team with 2.4 million, and just under the Kathy Stubbs team, about a spread of $20,000, the SIA group. Adjusted closed volume, congratulations to our top groups. All right, Triple Crown winners. This is one of my favorite slides. To qualify for Triple Crown, you have to be an individual agent and close three or more sales in one month. So look at all these people. We've got 10 people on this slide. Uh, Kareen D'Souza, Justin Duffield, Sahar Khatib, Travis Ford, Sharon Parker, Chris Lisak, Rima Malholtra, Angela McDaniel, Jose Montiel, and Safina Patel. Congratulations. <laughs> I love seeing lots of faces on that slide. When you're closing deals, you're capping. So I want to recognize our cappers from the month of May. We had the investor group. Congratulations, David and Diana Barnett. The Irvin team, Lee and Melody Irvin. Congratulations. Tanya Nicholas, first time capper. That's very exciting. Rachel Brannon, also first time capper. Congratulations, Rachel. Chris Lisak, he's a capper as well. Congratulations, Chris. Brad Countryman, first time capper. Congratulations, Brad. And Emily Shepard, congratulations, Emily. And Rebecca Robinson, capping again. Congratulations, Rebecca. And then celebrating our first listings with Keller Williams, we have Carlos Compion with his first listing at our office. Congratulations, Carlos. Also, Heather Lowry, her first listing. Uh, congratulations, Heather. Gerald Smith is first with KW. Congratulations, Gerald. Joseph Alvarez, congratulations on your first listing with Keller Williams. Kasim Abus Bay, congratulations, Kasim. And Mike Escobar, congratulations on your first listing with KW. When you're listing, the goal is to get them closed. So first closing with Keller Williams, we have Camilla Lopez. Congratulations, Camilla. Also, Heather Lowry, congratulations on your first closing. Uh, Neil Patel with the Borrow Buy Sell team, also first closing, congratulations. And then last, but certainly not least, we wanna recognize our Kelliversaries. We know that every year you have a decision where you do real estate, and we are so honored and privileged when you continue to do real estate with Keller Williams. Celebrating one year with Keller Williams, we have Adwa Achiampong, Encarnacion Castro, Monica Crofton, Kirk Dowdy, Tony Fields, Blaine Kaplani on the Pam Shockey team, Tanya Nicholas, Harold Pancholi, Violetta Panetta, Lenita Welch, Gabrielle Yelding, and Heather Lowry. Congratulations. I don't know if you guys find it exciting, but some of these names are also appearing on a word slide. So you can do this in one year. I'm just saying that I like that. That is encouraging. Nikki likes that too, right? All right, celebrating two years. We have Stephen Gates, Tyronika Jones, and Marlena Smith. Congratulations. Three years, Letitia Bailey, George Escobar, Flor Garcia, Sala Myers, and Alpana Patel, that's Sapna's sister. Four years, we have Kanisha Rayson Elliston, Rebecca Robinson, and Sapna Patel. Five years, Andrew Misick, Jason Wynn. Six years, Kevin Thompson. Seven years, Jim Jacobus, Sonia Jones, and Mandy Thuse. 10 years, Kaylee Cower. 11 years, Valerie Diaz, Israel Flores. 13 years, Alex Song, he's on the SIA group. 15 years, Ruby Sanders and 17 years, Rahina Ahmed and Al Pachoxi. Woo, congratulations. All right, and that concludes our awards for today, Nimesh. All right, thank you everybody, congratulations. Awesome, awesome, appreciate it, Krista. All right, um, we have one more um, little presentation here for you today. It's a value add that we've added for you guys as a partnership. And that is Homeward, okay? And so we have Grant Rothberg here to talk to you about that. Um, I could go into it a little bit, but he's probably gonna be a little better at it than me. So come on up, Grant, and explain um, our partnership. And we'll talk to you Mike. Thank you. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, last time I was here, it was when I think Smokey was in town doing uh, career visioning. And I sat right there in the back so we get their food very quickly. Uh, so I'm a Keller Williams agent as well down on the south side of town, on the east side over at the Pearland office. 
And I started using this company Homeward about three, three years ago uh, because I knew I needed to, as a solo agent, have something, some sort of competitive advantage against the big mega teams. You guys have some big teams that are absolutely slaying here. So I leaned into this tool that lets us make a cash offer with your clients while they are getting their mortgage, okay? So when I first heard about it, I thought it was kind of gimmicky, but it came about uh, Tim Heil's team in Austin, you know, Tim Heil here at Keller Williams. Um, he created this tool as a solution for folks who were reluctant to sell their houses because they didn't know for sure where they would go. There was a big problem in Austin for several years now where they'd go on listing appointments with Heil Group. They'd ask folks about taking the listing and the objection was always, we know you can sell our home pretty easily, but then where do we go? And so they would say things to them like, I'm going to wait until it calms down a little bit, right? Have you heard that before from somebody? I'm going to wait until it calms down. So the solution was, well, what if we went and bought your next house with cash first? What if we did that? And then after we knew for sure where you were going, then we put your house on the market and sold it for top dollar. How about that? And what they saw happen was their listings began to rise significantly. That objection was totally overcome. And they didn't have competitive uh, competitive. Uh, combative listing appointments anymore because they solved the client's real need first, which was where am I going to go? Uh, so Homeward went in, they let folks make a cash offer. And then last year, Homeward released another tool that lets your buyers who do not have a house to sell upgrade from a traditional mortgage to a cash offer. And I was actually talking to the message about this a second ago. One of the cool things about Homeward is the idea is to give you flexibility, get the deal done. So you can use Homeward's cash offer with any title company or any lender you choose. Okay. You can take Homeward's cash offer. We'll go buy the house that your client wants with cash while you're working on getting your title work and your lending completed, okay? So it's not a rent-to-own thing. Our goal is to sell it back to them right away. But we've seen what happens with this is the offer win rate with a Homeward cash offer is almost 70% consistently, okay? So who's written an offer that's gotten a no because the seller went with a cash offer instead? Anybody? Okay. So I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to give away two little gift cards here in this thing. So I'm going to ask this question. Nationwide, I want you to go have an appointment with a client. On average, how many offers is the average buyer making before they're accepted? Five. Five, okay. You would you say? Yeah. Seven is the answer. The average buyer nationwide is making seven offers before they're offered. Now, let me ask this question. How many offers on average nationwide is the average cash buyer making before their offer is accepted? The average cash buyer, how many offers before they're accepted? The answer is one. Nationwide, the average is one, right here. What was your name? Dave? Yep. The average cash buyer nationwide is making, seven, uh, is making one offer, whereas the average buyer is making uh, seven offers. With us, as we move into a tightening environment, more than ever, it's important for us as agents to keep our hourly wage in mind. Um, if I can make one offer while you're making seven, I'm more profitable. I'm going to make it through these tough times more than somebody else says. I'm also going to grab more business, more referrals, because they know I get the deal done faster and easier than someone else does. So we're going to do a class here in just a few minutes. Uh, grab your lunch in about 12, 15 or so. We'll kick off. I'm going to show you exactly how today you can reach out to your Sphere database, set an appointment with the prospect, and grab a listing or grab a lead to convert them. Okay? I'm going to show you how to do that with cash. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. All right. So grab your lunch and just wait. Um, wait, wait, Travis, for a little bit. All right. He's get get the lunch get settled if you can make it um probably about 12 15 12 20 he'll go until one and then amcap will have their class all right so that's kind of the setup we have and um and then he's going to be doing these a couple of times all right so a couple of times throughout the next month or so right okay awesome all right let's get our um our other amazing partners up okay who's they're racing who's going to be up here first <laughs> they'll speed it up me <laughs> all right awesome Melissa. Hi guys, I'm Whoa. Melissa from downstairs, patent title. Um, so Robbie uses uh, patent title. He currently has a land deal with patent title. So we do do land deals. We do all sorts of deals. So just ask me if you, if you um, need help with that. It is very important to give the title company, give patent title the T47 immediately. Right when you submit any existing survey, make sure you give a T47. What's happening is sellers, the seller agents aren't doing that. And it's basically if there's any encroachments or if there's any, if the pool was built or whatever, and it's not on the existing survey and we don't have that T47, it's delaying closing because then we have to order a new survey and it's taking a long time to order anything about now. So definitely, definitely T47 right away when submitting um, the contract to us.
What is the date that goes on the T-47? Nobody knows that. I mean, people know this, but they always ask us and they never know what to put. The date of the existing survey is the date you're gonna put on the T-47, okay? So that's that. It is National Smile Power Day. When you smile, your brain releases tiny molecules called neuropeptides to help fight off stress. Um, what did I write? I can't read my handwriting. Then other neurotransmitters uh, such as dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins come into play too. The endorphins act as a mild pain reliever, whereas the serotonin is an antidepressant. So the more you smile, the less depressed you are and the happier you are. Okay, that's my fun yeah. fact for the day. So smile more. If you have any questions, ask me. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I smile every day. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I took a one and two. Relate, relate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, today we are trying to uh, talk about the golden triangle. So, like, if your customer trusts you, you trust me, then it'd be more easy to close the sale. Okay. Like uh, last week, uh, there's a uh, greaser have a customer trying to sign up for the home security. She was at the friends, and then I mean sitting whatever at the friends. Then uh, the security guy was not able to call her, and then then I I text her and then say, oh by the way, you it might be able to save like seven to eight percent from the insurance company for the home insurance. The money you save will pretty much cover half the home security cost, right? And then I text Giza, then told her we are not able to call your customer. And then she, she said, let me talk to her. And then she talked to her and then the customer agreed to sign up. So it's easy to we, we team up, we, we trust each other. And then I think I'm a trust, uh, trustworthy person. Because right, like right now, the electricity way is like the market way is going crazy, okay? And then uh, now, uh, now, I mean, a lot of people, they sign up electricity before when they're moving, they're always lower. So I normally check with them, what's their own way and encourage them to transfer. In that. When they transfer, I don't make a penny, okay? But I honestly tell them their price was cheaper and do the transfer, they will benefit them. So I watch out your customers benefit for them, okay? So yeah, my phone number, anybody want to write down my phone number? All right, what is it? 713 If you forget, uh, my phone number is there or in the kitchen or call the front desk, okay? Awesome, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Right, Dale. Right, perfect. So, good morning, everyone. Thank you uh, for letting us join you guys today. I have a class that starts at one o'clock with Travis Spencer. Travis actually works for AMCAP Mortgage and helps us with marketing. and And his class is going to be geared at marketing yourselves as agents to your potential buyers. Um, we are going to offer this to you, the class. It is a CE class. I will pay for the first 10 people that want the two hours of CE, if that's a possibility. Um, we are going to show you a video real quick of one of the video business cards that we did for an agent that's here in the office. And if you're interested in that, I want to get you to sign up for the video business card. If you'll sign up, we're going to ask for 15 minutes of your time to sit down and talk with you about your business, where you get your business and where you're wanting to take your business. We're going to set it up with you with one of the loan officers at AMCAP. We'll then set up in the future a date where he will come back and do a video card for you, similar to what we're looking at. This is a real B&H customer story. Jack and Barbara, professional wildlife photographers and B&H customers for 30 years, live in rem
Hey guys, welcome back to Educating Houston. Thank you for coming to class. This video is designed to show you what to do with the video that we just made uh, as far as how to share it. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen right now. Now, one thing that's... No, was it not attached? I think it's going to be attached. Since you're sending it to your clients. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's promoting someone else, so that's okay. Uh, oh. Next listing is my picture. It's on there? Yeah, it's, on there. it's not it in the signature not portion in. of his email. Okay. A link and everything, the signature. That? Because that's, that's the one he sent you? Give you a business card. No, no, yeah. but is it from Brandon? Yeah. 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 How to upload a video? That's not it. Okay, same one. Try this one. Technical there. difficulties, oh. guys. Sorry about that. One. One. So so this one. is it. I can click on that. This one right here. No, oh, not clickable. This right here. Play right here. Nope, that's not it. Let's we'll see if this works real quick. Yeah, it's, it had to be oh, a transfer. It's fire. Yeah. It's no. fire. yeah. So All right, explain it, Dale. Sorry. Okay, so let me explain it since that didn't work out. So what we're offering is for you as an agent to be able to put in your signature portion of your email or on videos, if it's Instagram, if it's Facebook, a small video of you. It's 45 seconds to a minute. Travis is going to talk you through it. You're just basically going to be presenting yourself to the potential clients. It's gonna give them a chance to see an actual video to get to know a little bit about you. Might be your mannerisms, the way you present yourself, but it's something that we found that is a lot of the clients or potential buyers and sellers are wanting to know as much about you that they can. And so it's an opportunity for you to help to promote yourself business-wise. Um, so that class is at one o'clock. We're then going to, I'm going to pass this around for you guys. If you want to do the video, we're going to set that up at another time. I'm going to start here with you. But then also, please keep in mind that if you're working with the buyer, I've had six phone calls this week from buyers that want to buy houses. And unfortunately, what's happening in the interest rates? They're going down. They're going down. No, wrong. <laughs> So they continue to go up. And, and what that's doing is lessening that buyer's potential buying power. They can't buy as much as they might have been pre-qualified for. Get with your lender so that you're not out making offers for homes that are never going to get accepted. And if they do, you've wasted your time because the buyer may not qualify. You've got to check those numbers. And in this volatile up and down market, be on top of that to know that these are people you're going to have to get the finish line. You may just have to change their, their potential buying price may have to be lessened. So we're here to help you. Thank you very much. Awesome. And you, again, okay. You know what we can do though, Dale, is we can go ahead and put it on the Facebook group and show this is the example of we'll use Brandon, we'll Absolutely. use your video and show exactly how they do and how to contact you. You got it. Good. Yes. All right. Thank Perfect. you, Dale. Appreciate Thank you all. it. All right. All right, well, we have our lunch sponsor. Come on up, Travis. Oh, do set insurance. Thank you everybody for having me. Keep awesome. meeting. I'm Come on up, buddy. get y'all out of here quickly. I know everybody's super hungry, sure. uh, so don't worry. Raise your hands. Who all has heard of do set insurance? Sweet, a bunch of you. Awesome, awesome. Well, hopefully you've all worked with some great agents. So uh, for those of you that don't know about Goosehead, so we are one of the largest brokerages in Texas, meaning we work with over 40 different mm -hmm. carriers to provide your clients with you know, basically the freedom of choice to work with has however many people they want. Um, what's more important, you know, is about the flood. We work with really good flood carriers competitively right now. Um, I'm sure as y'all know, FEMA has done a whole revamp of what's going on in the FEMA market. And so it's extremely important to give your clients as many options as possible in regards to flood. Um, all of these things are extremely important. However, what I think is most important is who you're working with, whether you work with me at Goosehead or someone else. Um, it's always important to work with somebody who's going to take care of your client first and foremost. Make sure that they know they're working with the best realtor, someone who's going to be able to pick up the phone, whether it's talking to you or talking to your client and communicate well and effectively. Um, and just like Robbie had mentioned, working with somebody who knows just about everything they can about their business, right? Someone who is able to communicate effectively about what is going on, what is best for your client's needs, and what's going to help them protect their family and their assets 
when it comes to insurance. Um, and that's what you're going to be getting when you work with me. I passed out my cards to everybody. Hopefully everybody got them. Um, for everybody online, please, please, please save my number. Um, reach out to me. I would love to talk to each and every one of you individually. So hopefully I'll be able to reach out to you on the upcoming week and we can speak, see if there's an opportunity to work together because I would love to help y'all out. Congrats to everybody in here on uh, being extremely successful at what y'all do. Uh, that's why I love working with Keller Williams is that everybody is so great at what y'all do. So congratulations again on that. Hope y'all kill it throughout this summer uh, for the rest of the year. And hopefully we are able to work together in the near future. So any questions that anybody has for me or anything like that? Nothing. Awesome. Will Very you be nice. around just in case? I'm yeah, I'll be around. around. I'm going to stick around for lunch. But yeah. Hope you have awesome. Thank you, Travis. Appreciate yeah. the lunch, man. Travis. All right, one, uh, we do have one Sorry, more announcement one, by one Krista. Quick housekeeping yeah. note, um, we have our building's regular maintenance on the fire alarm system happening tonight and tomorrow night and or sometimes they give it two nights. So if you need to use an elevator or if you're meeting with a client, the fire alarms might go off after 6 p.m. tonight. That's a normal test and tomorrow night and or and the elevators are going to go down at some point. So you might want to leave prior to six. Awesome. That right. would be very important unless you love taking the stairs. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Don't forget. All right. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you for being online. And again, jam-packed day for the, for the next few hours. All right. Homeward in a few minutes and AMCAP's videos app following. Take care, guys. Make it a productive day. See you online.